Perfect. Thank you, Simon. Simon's been spearheading the AI effort here at UIC. It's an exciting time and we're really just getting started, but thankfully we can already see some of our efforts bear fruit. And so I wanted to share a little bit about that with you today. In regards to AI for accessibility, I wanna start by talking about Blackboard Ally. We launched Blackboard Ally at our institution in fall of 2023 and have already seen a tremendous impact. So what is Ally? Well, Ally is a tool integrated within your learning management system that helps course content be accessible. Ally does this automatically, checking all the files in your course for accessibility issues. Its accessibility checklist is based on Web Content Accessibility Guidelines 2.1 AA, which is an international accessibility standard aligning with most of the legislation and legal requirements worldwide. Ally does two things. It generates alternative accessible formats for students using advanced machine learning algorithms, and it provides feedback to instructors about the accessibility of their course content. This is an example of one of our course pages. At UIC, we use Blackboard, but Ally also integrates seamlessly with many other learning management systems, including Canvas and Moodle. Once Ally is integrated into your institution, you'll notice an added indicator next to all of your course files within the course. In our case, that's the A icon you see to the right of every file. If you click on this indicator, then you'll be presented with an alternative formats menu. Choose an option and Ally will AI generate you the file. As you can see, there are some example formats. These alternative formats provide an immediate, more accessible starting point. No actions required by the instructor. It is truly automatic. It does not change or interrupt any existing workflows. There was a recent study by the National Center for Education Statistics that found that a majority of college students with disabilities do not inform their college of their disability. So by automatically providing alternative formats for these students, we are really helping to service that underrepresented population. But with that said, we're also helping everyone else too. At uh, UIC, we're a large computer school located in the middle of Chicago. We have students uh, from all over the city as well as Chicago suburbs. It's not uncommon to have an hour or more commute. And so what better way to get a head start on your coursework than by listening to an MP3 version of your, favorite, or your required readings. At UIC, we also serve a diverse group of students, many of whom have a mother tongue in a different language other than English. And for that demographic, we can have Ally generate them a translated version so that they may better understand the content in their native language. And statistically, we're seeing the benefits. Since we introduced Ally in fall 2023, we've had over 74,000 alternative format downloads from over 15,000 uh, unique users uh, in about 4,000 total courses. Now, it's great that Ally has an impact without the instructor changing a thing with alternative formats, but we also want to be forward thinking and have the course content be more accessible to begin with. It is for this reason that Ally provides instructor feedback as well. Ally uh, for each file tells instructors what the accessibility issues are, explains how these issues affect inclusive learning, describes steps on how to fix the issues, provides an easy upload for the soon to be corrected version, and also gamifies instructor feedback by providing an accessibility score. Red means bad, green means good. You wanna try to be good. However, perhaps playing red light, green light isn't always enough of a motivator for instructors to actually publish changes. For example, since fall of 2023, we've had over 6,000 instructor feedback launches and over 2,000 of those had total fixes. And this is great, but that's still only about a 34% conversion rate. So what's causing two thirds of our instructors to bail out without making any of these changes? Probably the fact that despite the detailed steps Ally provides on how to fix the issues, it does require some form of effort. For example, one of our most common issues is images that are missing text descriptions. And perhaps if you're an instructor or an assistant to an instructor, writing detailed descriptions for all of your images may seem like a lot of work. So how do we get that conversion rate higher? Let's look at other ways we can use AI to improve that Ally work workflow. 
I'd like you all to consider the use of Microsoft's Bing.com slash chat, which is now AI powered. I quite like this chat because it's readily available while also having the option to protect your personal and company data. Using this chat, you can upload an image and ask for a description. You can avoid the need to manually write one yourself. And should you like that description, you can simply copy and paste this back into Ally, giving you easy green lights. Perhaps you don't need a full description of your images. You can, of course, tailor your searches. Here's an example of asking for alt text specifically. Again, we're really just getting the ball rolling with Ally going into our second semester using the tool. But perhaps by incorporating additional AI-assisted workflows, such as Bing.com slash chat, we hope to see a higher conversion rate among our instructors that open instructor feedback. And that leads us to additional possibilities. What else is out there? What are the demands of our students in the accessibility space? How can AI help? One such example that I'd like to share is Equidu, a tool that helps make training videos more accessible for the visually impaired. Now, students themselves with disabilities wrote this program as a submission for a recent Microsoft AI Classroom Hackathon. They won honorable mention. Powered by Microsoft Azure, Equidu lets people easily incorporate AI-generated audio descriptions into their videos so that the visually impaired can follow along. Imagine you're watching a video of me simply walking on stage to give a presentation. There's no audio cue in this video to tell the visually impaired viewer what's going on. So what Equidu can do for you is understand where audio cues are needed, strategically pause the video at those locations, give an audio cue such as man with glasses is walking towards the stage, unpause the video and continue onwards until a new audio description is needed. It's certainly an exciting time for AI accessibility technology. I'm excited to be a part of it, and I hope you are too, and I can't wait to see where it takes us. And with that, I'd like to pass it over to Simon. Yes, yeah, so uh, so far we've seen uh, some machine language, uh, uh, some uh, generative AI. Uh, we, of course, realize that AI is not new. It started in the 1940s, and it's helped students with disabilities for a while. Uh, captioning is an example of machine learning product. But now we have opportunity to develop not just software, but also hardware that can take advantage of uh, text-to-speech or uh, computer vision. Um, OCR is another example of uh, machine learning that's been with us for a while. But where we see uh, an opportunity is to, to make it less expensive and then to have devices that can really interact with students for their casual conversations, having live captions generated uh, audio, video content transcripts, because really generative AI augments human uh, capability. So uh, we still have to apply web accessibility uh, points to development of AI tools. So uh, we've had some tests around uh, ChatGPT and other available tools. How easily uh, can they be navigated for uh, users with disabilities? This continues to be uh, a challenge. However, generative AI offers writing shortcuts. So students who previously uh, may struggle with generating uh, text now can write less, but in flowery language. And this is a, a great opportunity for students with disabilities. AI can also uh, automate uh, accessibility testing, can provide uh, content recommendations. And uh, we've seen where uh, machine learning has already produced uh, great inventions like auto captioning, which helps everyone, or uh, where audiobooks are produced that help everyone. But we also see investment by large companies like Microsoft. And I invite you to visit uh, uh, the website that Microsoft set up for AI for accessibility. And this is a beautiful point uh, that now we see really large companies investing in AI for accessibility. So to close our presentation, uh, I, I want to uh, touch on our title, The Bicycle for the Mind. Uh, some years ago, Scientific American uh, posted an article about uh, locomotion among animals, uh, which animal uses the least energy for moving. And it uh, turned out that animals like the condor did really well, whereas humans really fall behind. Us walking can be difficult. But when they measured a human on a bicycle, it changed everything. A human on a bicycle beat 
a lot of the animals. So we are tool makers. And as tool makers, we really move things forward so that any limitations in nature or our human nature in itself can be overcome. So as tool makers, we certainly look at AI as a tool that will help students with disabilities. Thank you.